So welcome to this session of the Hassel Family History Association. And tonight, Anne Brockhurst is going to speak about Anne Hassel and Robert Campbell. And it's the 9th of September, 2022. Uh, I'm going to just give a brief introduction to the association and, and the family. It won't, uh, I won't go in, in depth uh, at this stage because Anne is going to cover so much uh, in her presentation. Let me just uh, get this into a slideshow. So hopefully you can see uh, an, an overview of the Hassel Family History Association. As most people know, the, the purpose of the association is to foster uh, research on the, the lives and heritage of Roland and Elizabeth Hassel and their descendants, but not just the Hassel family, but other early settler families who they are um, engaged with uh, in the early days, 19th century, uh, Australia, uh, and to also see what insights we can draw from this experience for uh, the present time. Uh, Roland and Elizabeth, who are the, the uh, forebears that we, we focus on, had uh, nine children, eight of whom grew to adulthood and married, and each of those eight had fairly large families. And by the third generation, there's approximately 60, 61, 62 uh, offspring. And of course, in this session, we're focusing on Anne, who's the last born apart from poor Elizabeth, who drowned at the age of two. But Anne then is one of the youngest. And this is uh, in a series of presentations that we're making uh, to, to follow this one. We know that Roland Elizabeth uh, originated in England, spent a brief period in the Pacific uh, in the mission experience with the LMS, but then the longer period of their lives and indeed the, the, the years in which they had their families uh, was spent mostly in New South Wales, in Parramatta and uh, nearby locations. We look at a, a chart of the nine children, we see that they were born commencing with Thomas in 1794, Samuel 1796, all through the years. But tonight we're focusing on Anne, who's born in 1808, the substance of uh, Anne Brockhurst's presentation. Just briefly to show where Anne's uh, lifespan fits into the family as a whole, What's coming up on the screen are the, the marriages of the eight children. There were three who married at the same time in 1819. Thomas married in 1822, Eliza 1823, Susanna 1827, and because Anne was the, the youngest, and she, at, in 1830, married Robert Campbell. That's part of the story that we'll hear about tonight. And, of course, James was the last to marry in 1836. There's Anne there, age 22. Now, four of these eight children passed away, or in fact, five before the age of 40, but the other four lived to ripe old ages, including Anne, who lived to the age of 83. So it's a remarkable life uh, that we're going to hear about. Now, this is the grandchildren of Roland and Elizabeth, of whom there are 60, approximately. The ones in green are the 10 children of Anne uh, and Robert Campbell. So the first born 1830, then 1832, 1834, 1836. 10 children born there through to 1851. I also have the, the years of the passing of those same children. And the interest in this is simply to, because there's so many children to, to try and understand this is just the third generation and the most of us online are from the sixth and seventh generations. Uh, is that the last of their children, who's also named Anne, passed away in 1940. All right, so uh, you know about the, the association by now that we're interested in publishing, uh, we're interested also, there's, this, this is the Australian uh, Dictionary of Biography, uh, and many of the Hassels have, a, in a sense, a, 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 um, a kernel of an entry. For Anne Campbell, uh, she's a person of historical interest, but the 
note says we do not have an entry for this person. If you have an obituary or further biographical information, please contact. That's an opportunity for Anne Brockhurst, if you want to put it there. Is that a hint? <laughs> it's an opportunity. And th there are many of them uh, in, in that uh, biographical uh, project. So the Hassel Heritage Project and the Genealogy Project and the Transcription Project are all projects in the lead up to our um, major event next year, May 2023, uh, which is we're calling the legacy of the early Hassels, Build Your History, Know Your Hassels in May 2023. And many people are now hearing about this and starting to get interested in coming along. So that's a broad and, and swift overview of the association and our interests. And I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to invite Anne Brockhurst to take over the session and, uh, and uh, tell us about uh, Anne and Robert Campbell. Okay, so what do I need to hit share screen? That's right. Share and then screen. find your PowerPoint. Excellent. So we can see it. I think you just now you just have to hit PowerPoint or slideshow. I mean, well, what have I done here? Yeah, that's right. Just hit slideshow. I don't think it's that one. Okay. Just go along the headings and, and you'll get to slideshow. Oh, yeah, here we go. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll say from the beginning, play from start. C click that again and come over to the left, play there from start. Go. There we go. We yeah. can see it. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so just introducing myself, I'm Anne Brockhurst. My maiden name is Curtis. I um, was saying before the meeting start, my hassle line basically comes down the female lines. So I'll stick to maiden names just to keep things simpler and less confusing because we're all named Anne and I myself am named after Anne Hassel and her daughter Anne Campbell. So just um, the beginning slide here, I've got a piece of lace there that you'll see. These pieces of lace are actually in my possession and are just known as the Hassel lace. Oh. So um, I believe they came from Anne's mother, Elizabeth. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, so yeah, Anne Hassel. She was born in that beautiful home in Parramatta in 1808, the second youngest of Roland and Elizabeth's nine children. At the time of Anne's birth, Roland Hassel had many land grants. He was pretty well known and established in the colony this, this, at this time and is a pretty well respected man. The whole family pretty well respected actually. Um, he has some fledgling farm interests plus a government store that supported the family. Um, Roland was also starting to get more involved in politics whilst continuing to conduct his missionary work. Essentially, I think Roland was a man of God, but, you know, he's got to support his family as well. Uh, it seems like he's a very intelligent man and got himself involved um, in the early affairs of the colony quite, as, as you guys probably already know through your own research. It is recorded that the family had a, a lot of help, though, in the form of servants and convict labour. So it probably explains how they were able to keep all these pursuits going. The young Anne Hassel attended the Sunday school set up by her brother Thomas and received an education, which, as far as I'm aware, all the children, all the Hassel children were able to read and write, which is no mean feat. Back in the early 1800s, not all, all children got that opportunity. Um, and just quickly, I'll just put in, oh, that's, I've got your video on the side and it's sort of clouding my screen. Anyway, I'll work with it. As you can see from this um, little family tree here, Anne Hassel is the second youngest. And, uh, and just interesting to note, Elizabeth Hancock's, you know, Thomas, Hassel was born in 1794 and was born in, eight, I can't quite see Elizabeth's birthday, I think it was 1810. But yeah, I think Thomas was about 16 when the youngest sister was born. So um, it's just interesting that Elizabeth Hancock had children, you know, Tahiti, she was, you know, sailed out from England and, you know, she continued to have all these children over the years, so pretty incredible. In 1812, at the age of four, tragedy strikes, 
with the death of the young um, Elizabeth in the pond in front of the house. Now, for me, this is quite significant to Anne Hassel because um, little Elizabeth would have been her playmate. So it's probably, so when you think about it, that they travelled out from England and Tahiti and everything that happened there, and, and this is the first child they lose, so obviously would have hit their family very hard. At the age of 12, um, the death of Father Roland and his little niece. I'm just going to try. Oh, that's better. Okay. So you can see here there are many, as you'd know from your own research, there are many um, obituaries in the papers of the time. So as we know, Roland was a, a pretty well-respected man. Um, and I just want to make mention here that um, the cause of Roland Hassel's death was the epidemic Qatar. Qatar fever. I'm not sure if I've got the pronunciation right, but it's a respiratory illness. And just a few days after he dies, their first little grandchild also dies of the same epidemic. So Anne Hassel's teenage years was spent um, basically helping her mother and her brothers and sisters in the many family pursuits. Um, Anne Hassel in later life described her mother as possessing fine, delicate hands, which in no doubt aided her lace making. Uh, and that comes from some uh, recorded written family history that I've got here. Anne Hassel used to travel to Bathurst once a year with her mother to collect the rent from the shop tenants via a curricle, which is some sort of horse-drawn little vehicle. The children would ride their horses and camp out using their saddles for pillows. Elizabeth Hancock took with her a feather bed, which would be set up every night and packed back in the curricle in the morning, which sort of, you know... I'm not a real tent person myself, and I think this is inherited, as you can <laughs> see. Uh, at age 17, Anne Hassel is still living in her mother's house and doing those household duties. Um, and the family receive message via a by the letter from England that their sister and daughter, Mary Cover Hassel, has died whilst giving birth to her daughter, Mary Australia Laurie, on Christmas Day. And no doubt this would have hit the 17-year-old Anne Hassel quite hard. They wouldn't have found this out for many months after Mary's death. Um, and also there must have been a million questions going through their minds, how the baby was, where the children were. Um, Mary Cover Hassel had already lost uh, her uh, child when their father died. So, but that's a story for another family line. Um, I, in 1830, Anne Hassel is age 22, and her brother Samuel, he dies at age 34. But there is some good news as Anne Hassel marries Robert McKay Campbell at St John's Church, Parramatta, the same church where her father is buried. So I think that's a nice little thing. And she's married by her brother, Thomas. So like her siblings, Anne Hassel inherited a sizable estate and was also granted land on her marriage due to the fact that she was the daughter of a clergyman. As well as sheep and cattle, property included Brown's Farm at Prospect Hill, originally a land grant to John Brown, but I've been able to find no further information on that um, piece of land. Anne's Vale at Burrowa, which is now subdivided and became the focal point in Anne Hassel's life. And a property named Beverly at, also at Burrowa, although some records say that this was a grant to Anne Hassel, and some say it was a grant to Anne Marsden. But either, either or, it soon became a, an integral part of the Campbell Hassel uh, property portfolio. It is now a successful merino sheep stud owned by the Merriman family. So Anne Hassel's husband, Robert McKay Campbell, he was born in Edinburgh, Scotland on the 16th of August, 1806 to Alexander Campbell and Elizabeth Dick. His father died young and at the age of 17, Robert came to Australia via the skeleton. He worked for his uncle, William Douglas Campbell on properties Harrington Park and Arbor Foyle. Robert was granted the 
property Wingelow, which at its peak consisted of about 7,000 acres. Wingelow acted as a coach changing station, a barrack for convicts and a cattle farm. And he built a fine homestead there as well using convict labour and the buildings remain to this day. Uh, Wingelow was granted, I believe, on his marriage to Anne Hassel and because he was the uh, nephew of um, William Campbell. So Harrington Park, uh, Harrington Park was located pretty much next door to the Hassel family land grants. Now, keep in mind, Robert McKay Campbell was working at Harrington Park. So essentially, um, unlike her sisters who mostly married clergymen, Anne Hassel married the boy next door. Uh, soon after, so just a little bit of background information. Soon after the first fleet arrived, some cattle went missing from the government farm at Rose Hill and were discovered seven years later on some lush grassland, which was soon named cow pastures. This area was claimed as a government reserve as the small herd of cattle had grown significantly thanks to the fertility of the land. Cow pastures was controlled by Roland Hassel. It was later split into land grants with Roland Hassel and his children receiving at least some of this land. Harrington Park, which was next door to Cow Pastures, was granted to the man named William Douglas Campbell, uncle of Robert McKay Campbell. Buildings were constructed from around 1817 and no doubt Robert McKay Campbell had some involvement. The buildings are now heritage listed and once served as a holiday home for the Fairfax family. William Douglas Campbell never married or had children. And although Robert McKay Campbell was employed for many years by his uncle, he received no part of Harrington Park on his uncle's premature death. And in fact, most of it all went back to relatives back in Scotland. So this is Harrington Park, beautiful buildings, which is still in existence. Oh. So Wingelow, Robert McKay Campbell was granted oh, wow. Wingelow, which at its peak consisted of about 7,000 acres. It's located in the southern highlands of New South Wales. Wingelow acted as a coach changing station, barrack for convicts and a cattle farm. It is now owned by Twynham Investments and has been considered for heritage listing. Thank you, Rosalind Vaughan, who is following up on um, some petitioning for that to happen. So this is Wingelow. So Robert McKay Campbell built the, I, I know he built the, you can see the original part of the homestead there um, and some other outbuildings there. Robert, I don't think Robert, Robert McKay Campbell, you know, built them hand by, hand by hand himself, convicts and what have you would have done that, but he was certainly involved in the design. And this was Anne Campbell, Anne Hassel and Robert McCain Campbell's first two children were born at Cobberty, um, but their subsequent children were born here. So after they married and built the house, they came to live here. So Anne Hassel and Robert McKay Campbell had 10 children, including one set of twins, all surviving into adulthood. My ancestor is Anne Broughton Campbell, the second youngest. There she is there. In 1834, there's some more bad news with Elizabeth Hancock dying. Anne inherits part of the proceeds from the sale of her mother's sheep and cattle, while her brothers inherit her land and all other possessions. And, and that was just how things were in the day. I guess it was expected that Anne would be taken care of by her husband. Anne's brother, Jonathan Hassel, sadly takes his own life following years of his own financial troubles. So 1834 wasn't a great year. In 1835, another sister, Eliza Hassel, dies aged 31. Um, and she was married with six children living in Bathurst. And in 1839, the family were robbed by the bushranger Thomas Whitton. By 1834, they had, and in 1834, they had 30 head of cattle stolen by a hut keeper, who unfortunately had sold 11 head of cattle to a butcher before the crime was revealed. And this was a savage blow to the family because in 1830, 1844, 30 head of cattle was a lot. 
Unfortunately, um, 1848, um, Robert McKay Campbell is insolvent. It, it's important to remember, though, there were a lot of insolvencies at this time. The Bank of Australia went broke. A lot of people were struggling. Years of drought. People were finding it hard to farm the land. Um, they didn't know how to farm the land, basically, because they were being farmers in England, not in Australia. So... It was a common occurrence, but unfortunately, um, Robert K. Campbell lost everything. And in some uh, reports of the insolvency, they even sold the bed sheets, like everything was taken. But Anne managed to hang on to Anne's Vale, the um, marriage grant that she had got. I'm assuming because it was separate to Robert's, I'm not sure, I don't understand land grants. But she moved from that beautiful homestead. She's gone from the beautiful homestead at Parramatta, which her father built, the homestead at Wingelow that her husband built. And here she is. She ends up living out the remainder of her days in this little bark hut. So um, there were two properties in Borrower. They travelled about 200 k's over to Anne's Vale. And Anne Hassel was probably, she would have at least been breastfeeding or she would have had little children and possibly pregnant with the next one um, as they travelled with all their belongings over to Borrower. And I've just put that little map there just so you can see. They were basically neighbouring properties along the Borrower River. Now, this is the Beverly Homestead. Um, and uh, Robert McKay Campbell built this homestead on the Beverly property. I don't believe Anne Hassel ever lived in this homestead. Robert McKay Campbell did live in this homestead with his um, eldest daughter and her husband. But... It, um, <laughs> Unfortunately, insolvency comes once again. In 1862, Anne's brother James dies, aged 60 years of age, and a huge fire destroys all of Robert McKay Campbell's crops. The fire is suspicious and there are no charges are ever laid. The family are at this stage heavily in debt um, and he loses everything. And the property Beverly um, becomes part of their son-in-law's possessions. Their son-in-law also named William Campbell, which I think I've got on the next slide. No, I haven't, sorry. Um, he's, he's also the magistrate and the um, justice of the peace and what have you. He signs the insolvency papers and somehow Beverly is transferred to him. So the property Beverly remains in the family through I'm not 100% sure legal ways, but it does. But Anne's veil surprisingly uh, remains in the possession of Anne Hassel, even it, Robert McKay Campbell of Anne's veil. Like back in the 1800s, everything belonged to the man, didn't it? But um, yeah, even though he's gone bankrupt twice, she manages to hang on to the property. So in old age, Robert McKay Campbell goes to live with his daughter, Jessie, and her husband, John Macquarie Antill, on the Antill Estate Jarvis Field. He died there aged 79 years in 1885 and is buried in the Antill family vault. Anne Haspel remained at Anne's Vale until a few short weeks before her death when she went to live with one of her daughters. Anne Hassel died on the 16th of November, 1891 of influenza, aged 84 years. The borrower news of the day, Friday the 20th of November. The death of Mrs. Anne Campbell, truly the oldest resident of the borrower district has passed away. Mrs. Campbell of Anne's Vale, relict of Mr. R.M. Campbell, died at the residence of her daughter, Mrs. W.D. Campbell, on Monday night at the great old age of 84 years. Um, and goes on to explain her um, connection to the Reverend Thomas Hassel. But the why I put this in, down the, uh, it says a peculiar coincidence is stated by the relatives. And that is that his father, the Reverend Roland Hassel died 72 years ago from influenza. The primary cause of Mrs. Campbell's death 
then the first time the complaint was known in the colony. But didn't oh. Roland Hassley died of this catarrhal fever? So influenza or epidemic catarrhal fever has made its appearance during the last fortnight. So basically they were one and the same thing. But it wasn't until about, I think um, Roland Hassel died in 1821. It wasn't until the next epidemic in 1834 that everybody sort of realised, oh, that, that what everybody died of back in, 18, in the 1820s was actually influenza. So I just put that in just in these epidemic times um, just to say uh, how our family has been influenced by epidemics. So this here is the grave of Anne Hassel and two of her grandchildren. This is on the Beverly estate. And it's basically in the middle of a cow paddock to chase the cows off it to get the photo. Uh, and the Brewer River sort of runs um, around this plot kind of thing. Um, this is, I would very much like to, in the future, um, try and put some sort of monument or something there to mark her grave, a little bit more than a few rocks. That photo was taken by me when I went to visit uh, just before um, COVID. So a quick snapshot of the children of Anne Hassel and Robert McKay Campbell. So their first, their eldest daughter, Elizabeth, born in 1830, she's born at Coberty, um, and she married William Douglas Campbell. Now, I'm not sure if this Campbell is a cousin, how he connects. I've got a few Campbell lines, but he is not connected to the uncle of Robert McKay Campbell. So it gets really confusing, and I apologise for that. Um, this couple had four children, though two died as toddlers. Elizabeth died in 1871, aged 40, of ileus from a lack of gut movement. So this is the couple that Robert McKay Campbell built the Beverly Homestead for, and he lived at the Beverly Homestead. And um, uh, following his um, second insolvency, he went to live with his other daughters at Jarvis Field. So I can't say why Anne Hassel and her husband didn't live together in later years. I've got a copy of Robert McKay Campbell's death certificate. It doesn't indicate that he was an ill man or anything like that, but maybe she just didn't like him anymore, but that's all speculation. Their second daughter, Susanna Sinclair Campbell, born in 1832. She never married and I haven't been able to find much more information on her, unfortunately. Jessie Hassel Campbell, born in 1834. Jessie was born at Cobbity as well, and she married John Macquarie Antill. Her husband was 29 and she was only 17 at the time. And they had 10 children with two sons serving in the Boer War. Now, the Antill family were, uh, this particular family were um, military famous, I guess you'd say. Um, and they had the large estate Jarvis Field, which is now, I believe, a golf course or something at Picton. Um, and John Macquarie Anta was also the police magistrate from the age of 24. So quite a well, uh, quite an esteemed family. Um, Jessie Hassel Campbell, she died age 83 in 1917. Now, the first of the twins, Robert James Campbell, born in 1836, born at Wingelow. He married his cousin, Catherine Ann Hassel, in 1864, the daughter of Ann Hassel's brother, James. And they had seven children. And he, they managed properties down in the Geelong area before disappearing, falling overboard in 1877 while sailing from Melbourne to Sydney. It's believed he was affected by heat stroke and became delirious and just fell off the ship. This family is particularly sad. Two of their young sons had died only months earlier of scarlet fever and a daughter had died two years earlier of inflammation of the lungs. His, Catherine, his wife, Catherine, never, never remarried and she died in 1931, aged 88. 
Mary Hassel Campbell, the second of uh, the twins, and most likely a surprise, no doubt. Um, born at Winslow, of course, she married Edward Spencer Antill, um, the one who ended up having to go and manage properties in Queensland and did not inherit the rather large estate. Um, they had 11 children whilst travelling all over Queensland, which is pretty amazing. Um, and they both lived into their old age. Mary Hassel Campbell died in 1927, aged 91. And this is the family line of fellow member Rosalind Vaughan. So I'm sure she will give presentations in the future about these guys. Alexander McKay Campbell, also born at Wingelow in 1840. He married the daughter of his cousin, Lucy Elizabeth Wildash. Um, they had 11 children. So those that didn't have too much tragedy, they had big families. All 11 children surviving into adulthood. Um, this family lived at Ansvale with um, Anne Hassel till at least 1870. After his mother's death in 1891, Alexander and Lucy went to live at Jarvisfield as well with his older sister. Alexander Mackay Campbell died at Picton in 1926. Jenny Campbell, born in 1844, he never married or had children and was killed in a horse riding accident whilst mustering sheep in Victoria in 1871. His body was returned to Yass and he's buried in the Yass Cemetery with his older sister Elizabeth, who died the same year. So not pretty tragic, really. And I just love reading some of these um, newspaper stories that are just so graphic. Um, if I just find the line here. Um, he was out mustering sheep when in galloping his horse near the fallen she-oak, he was caught by one of the branches, a stake from which passed completely through his body in the region of his groin. He was immediately taken to the house of a neighbouring farmer named Bolan and Dr Tweedale of Balmora was sent for, but the nature of the injuries was such that nothing could be done and after lingering about three hours, death put an end to his suffering. So no question as to how he died, unfortunately. Catherine Alexa Campbell, born in 1847, um, I think she was born at Winslow. I need to confirm that. Um, Catherine was 30 years old when she married the 50-year-old widower of her older sister, Elizabeth, in 1877. It was six years after Elizabeth's death. So as we know, um, a lot of marriages of that era, like if a younger sibling married the widow, it was usually so that they could take on the caring responsibilities of the children or to keep the children in the family or what have you. But both Elizabeth and William's children were close to adulthood at this age. So I like to think that this is a marriage of love or romantic um, ideas. I don't know. However, William Douglas Campbell was quite ill by this stage. He ends up dying in 1881 of kidney disease. Um, and at that time, Catherine had a young son and she gave birth to her daughter about a month after her husband's death. So she never remarried and she died in 1932 at age 86. And funnily enough, her husband, William, was buried next to his first wife in Yass. Oh, so along with most of the rest of the family. So Anne Broughton Campbell. Anne Broughton Campbell was born at Anne's Vale on the 11th of June, 1849. Um, she married Argyle McCallum on the veranda of the Beverly Homestead in 1870. And she was 21 and Argyle was 26. And they settled on the McCallum property, Good Hope, and had nine children. Only three of those children married and had children of their own. She died in 1940, aged 92 at Parramatta. I believe she was crema cremated, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, her husband died in 1912. He was brokenhearted, basically, following the resumption of Good Hope um, for the Murrumbidgee River Project, and he's buried in the Yass Cemetery. 
Funnily, I don't know why none of the family were buried at Burrawa. They all seem to go back to Yass. I think that's where the hospital was. And also, too, Anne Broughton Campbell ended up nursing. A lot of the family, when they got sick, they seemed to go to the home of Anne Broughton Campbell. She seemed to um, nurse everybody um, whilst they were ill and subsequently passing away. And these wonderful Australians are my great-great-grandparents. Roland Thomas Hassel, a uh, Campbell, sorry, born in 1851. He was born at Yass. I don't know why he wasn't born at Anne's Vale, but anyway, he was living with his mother, Anne Hassel, um, when she died in 1891. Following his mother's death, he married an Elizabeth McCutcheon, but they had no children, and he died at 80 years of age. So the stats, quick stats for Anne Hassel. She outlived her husband and all of her siblings. She went from the beautiful home in Parramatta built by her father to the slab hut at Ansvale. She lived at Ansvale for over 40 years, only leaving in the last few weeks of her life. Three of her 10 children predeceased her, as did 10 of her 54 grandchildren. None of her land remains in the family that I know of. Uh, the only possession of hers that I have is a few pieces of lace that was made by her mother, Elizabeth Hancock. And my research, I'm hoping to write a book about the McCallum family of Good Hope, whom Anne Hassel's daughter, Anne Broughton Campbell, married into. Um, I also hope to do some more research and contribute to the Hassel family history group on behalf of the descendants of Anne Hassel. Um, this is the first time I've really researched Anne Hassel doing this little project for Graham. I think she's a pretty awesome lady and I'm really glad I've done this because I've learned a lot. Uh, that's me there with the grave of one of Anne Hassel's grandchildren there in Yass. In the background is the other graves of the Hassel Campbell families. They seem to be all buried together, which is nice. And that's it. <laughs> Oops, what do I do? Um, could I ask a question, please? You may, absolutely. Um, I didn't realise that Anne and Robert weren't together. Yeah, I don't. Do we yeah. know when they separated or? I, I don't know if they formally separated. There's no record of that, but there's just he lived for a number of years at either Beverly and then on to Jarvis Field. I, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, they they were certainly still married and everything, yeah. but, and yeah. That was the longest marriage in the Hassel yeah. children. Yeah. It was over 50 years, so that's why I was surprised by that. Yeah, now, they didn't the others, exactly separate. I just don't think um, they lived together. The yeah. connection from... This family to the Antills is an interesting one yeah. because these two Antills were the children of Henry Colden Antill, That's who great. was the aide de camp to Lachlan Macquarie. Yeah. And he travelled with Macquarie to Bathurst. There's some very extensive diaries kept about those journeys, and they stayed at one stage with Roland, and he's mentioned in these diaries. Okay. So there's a very strong connection between the Antils and the Hassels that's yeah. worth looking into further. Yeah. And I'm, I've sort of, I've been doing some transcribing and looking out for mention um, of this connection, but not finding it so far. No, but, you know, Antils diaries certainly mention Hassel. Well, wasn't Bly the governor and then Macquarie was the governor? So, no. but uh... uh, Macquarie was before. Oh, yes, because my other connection with this family is that I come from George Johnston, who arrested Governor Bly. Ah. So they're all tangled up. Yes. Um, and I've just been attending a conference held at um, Government House, at New South Wales Parliament House, which got suspended today because of losing the Queen. But oh. it's talking about this early colony. And Marsden's getting a strong mention oh, okay. with the big report. The big reports are, are looking into the Legislative Council 
um, and what was going on with Macquarie, Anthill, Marsden. And so far, because we didn't get to today, where the hassle is mentioned in this big report as well, that will be something to look into because Marsden doesn't come out all that well. No. Um, yeah, but that's another avenue to look at and really opening because it's their 200th anniversary of the Legislative Council being set up. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been tangled up with in the last couple of days. Yeah, because it's my understanding that Roland Hassel was, oh, I don't know if you say mates or friends or what have you, but he was more aligned to Macquarie than he was to Bly. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So it's a fascinating little group that's starting to mix around and you get a different perspective on where Macquarie was yeah. in the colony. There's a lot of controversy coming out now after looking at this big report and they're transcribing that as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. something more comes out. We get some more information on the family. Yeah. 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 So that's all I had to say. <laughs> Does anybody yeah, you've else done have well. any more questions? <laughs> you've done well with that research. Thank you. I don't know if you guys can see, but mm. that's my mum had the lace made into a hairpiece. I don't know what, but anyway. And you had is. the beautiful miniature of Robert. I did, yeah, the daguerreotype. Yeah. 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 Which was yeah. fabulous to find that. Yeah, apparently there was one of Anne Hassel, mm -hmm. but mum doesn't know what's happened to it. So I'm hoping it turns up at some point. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Yeah, it would be really good. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, but I've anyway. got a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> I think I read somewhere that Governor Macquarie was related to the Campbells. So I don't know whether that was true or not. Quite possibly. I would have to look over the information again and refresh my memory. I've got a feeling there were sisters, you know, they were married to sisters or something like that. No, Macquar oh, I don't know. That's not right. But anyway, I would have to look over that. Yeah. yeah. Of course, there were several Campbells that weren't related, mm -hmm. weren't closely related anyway. So That's correct. That that could have been the one that was Macquarie was related to. Might not have been our, well, our there Campbell. Was, there was Robert Campbell who had the Campbell stores. Yes. Um, yes. And Robert Mackay Campbell is quite often confused with that Robert mm. Campbell. Right. Right. Mm. Yeah. There's also Robert Campbell who built Duntroon. Yep. So no, and yeah. that's another one. So and, and we're nothing to do with Duntroon that I know of. And it's believed that his mother was the organist for the Hassels. Now, have That's we confirmed? Correct. Yes, confirmed but I, that? yes, but I I believe she died back in England, so yes, I she haven't went back. been able to yeah. follow her life to confirm that. Hmm. Yeah, maybe she'll turn up in the Hassel family papers. Yeah, that's what me. I would hope so. We keep yeah. looking. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice, you know, those ones that are doing the transcribing, like if they found some of those letters, like mm. from Mary Cover, who, you know, announcing her death and stuff like that. So I've been but, jumping around those papers a bit to see the context of where they're writing. And so mm. much of it seems to be about their church work and not their family. Unfortunately, yes. And I had a look at it too. And sometimes they end up transcribing newspaper articles. Mm. You're just like, dude, we don't want to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an but anyway. interesting journey looking at what was going on. Yeah, um, they were very involved in the happenings of the day. Like they, they seem to um, hold on to any bit of news in the political, political world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Yes. Yes, go ahead. You've both mentioned Anne's Vill and Anne's Vale. And I've been came across something recently about that and Anne Hassel. So are they the same place or not? Anne's Vale, yes, I believe. And Anne's so. Vill. 
Yeah, I don't. I haven't heard of an Annsville so patch. Oh yes, there is. Yeah. yeah, that she was involved with. Yes. Um, so I just recently got to know someone who who was traced. Well, is traced back to one one Aboriginal woman who was a product of the Native Institute that um, that was started by uh, in Parramatta and that Macquarie did su certainly supported. And she ended up, and what you said about Anne hanging onto her property, she and when this woman's um, husband died, she was somehow able to carry on the her property near Yass and was well respected in the community oh, for okay. it. Okay, I'll so have I thought, to look well, into that. That, could be, that yeah. could be. I was also interested in the suicide because in our line, there have been quite a lot of suicides too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's I didn't know any others. Yeah, Graham and I were talking. I don't know. I don't. I can't comment on Jonathan Hassel or all that sort of thing because I don't know much about that line. But I think at the time, you know, you got to put everything in the context of the times too. Um, often people suicide because they were embarrassed. You know, they hadn't lived up to an expectation. So. I don't I don't know much more about that one. Yes, but then since there was a lot of them were related to the church, that would have been doubly difficult. Absolutely. For the families. Absolutely. And you've got to, yeah, remember the thinking of the time because people who did suicide, you know, they were buried away from other people. They well, were allowed to be buried on consecrated ground. So Yeah, they said yeah. that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't looked into it. That that always happened. Yeah. May not it may have been all right. Yeah. Sometimes. Did they have funerals or not? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, still recently. Super okay. sad, though. Mm. Yeah. I just want to comment about something. Uh, somebody mentioned Commissioner Big, mm. the mm. Uh, tour of Commissioner Big, and he was very critical of the whole, mm. the whole thing in New South Wales. Mm. The he, the idea was that they were sending convicts out. It was supposed to be a prison, but it was more like a holiday resort for a lot of people <laughs> after, after they, what they lived in in UK somewhere. Mm. So uh, if he's criticised your ancestor or whatever, I, I wouldn't be too worried about it. He criticised everybody. The, the <laughs> thing that's come out was he took <coughs> statements from a lot of the eminent people that were here and they've got a list of who he interviewed, which Probably. I want to get my hands on. Yeah. But also Trove are pulling up some of these big papers. There's vast volumes of them. But wouldn't it be wonderful if we could find whether he interviewed Roland Hassel? Oh, no, because Roland's yeah. dead at that time. If he interviewed any of the other Hassels, it would be really interesting to know. Yes. Because right. he did two women and the rest were all men. But he was scathing. And um, yeah. today yeah. we were in the city... And we're in High Park Barracks and the story came up that Macquarie set up um, a courthouse opposite. But when Biggs came, he said, we don't need a courthouse, we need more churches. So that's where St James Church was, oh, yeah. the converted courthouse that Biggs insisted on that Macquarie had to. So there's some fascinating stuff around yeah, this area yeah, sure, um, yeah. coming in, particularly and influence this. So I'm sure, Roll, the, the Hassel family are tied up with it somewhere. I know, I know just a little bit about it. Uh, Big asked, uh, in a sense, put out questionnaires or invited mm. uh, uh, people to answer questions. And Roland provided information on his, uh, his economic uh, activities and how much livestock he had and that sort of thing, because Big was wanting to get, to get a sense of what the economy was like. And I felt when I read it that Roland was so diligent in trying to answer these questions and help this uh, inquiry into the, the progress of the colony. It's very interesting. Um, there's a lot of material in the, the Bonwick transcripts, which are in the State Library. Okay. And there's a PhD by a fellow named Ritchie, John Ritchie, 1969, Punishment and Profit, the reports of Commissioner Big on the colonies of New South Wales and Van Diemen's Land. Yeah, and that that, it, that, yeah. that refers to uh, Roland. But um, that, that report came out in 1819. 
mm-hmm. and um, and there's no no evidence that any of the other hassles were involved because they were younger then. The the boys were you know young men only, mm-hmm. so it was only Roland who participated in that. But then a lot of them are involved with the church through Marsden as well. Samuel Marsden and yeah, but in terms of um, yeah. references in the big report, it's only Roland's economic activities. Okay. Um, the relation, the 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 religious relationship between uh, Roland Hassel and Samuel Marsden is a very interesting one, and hasn't been written about yet. To understand that complex relationship, Alison may know a little bit about that, because we've talked about it a bit. But we think that the the um, the church relationship was much uh, clearer between Thomas and Samuel, who is his mm-hmm. father, and, and and Samuel Marston as his father-in-law, and the relationship between Roland and Samuel Marston was more of a business relationship and managing of properties. Mm-hmm. That's my take on it so far. Um, yeah. And uh, Rockers, one one thing in your it's not it's not an error in your presentation. Uh, there's a common mistake made in one of the uh, press articles you had that talks about Reverend Roland Hessel, uh, yeah. and he wasn't Reverend. But yeah. I'm tracing this because it, it was from early days people so aligned him with the, with the church that they thought that he must have been ordained, but he wasn't. But the reason mm-hmm. that's interesting is that. Uh, I don't think it's possible that any of his children would have got land grants on the basis of their father being a clergyman because he wasn't. They got land grants simply because they were being given to everybody um, in their own right as uh, sort of white settlers. Um, But it's not to do with the church. Whereas Thomas, uh, his children uh, got breaks because uh, he was a clergyman. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. And again, this is all little threads that we haven't done the, you know, the detailed work on. Um, But Thomas ended up uh, pretty well off because he had economic interests. He got uh, grants on the basis of his, of his um, uh, religious um, credentials. Um, And he inherited uh, Denby, et cetera, Mm. and uh, did better than the, the, his sisters and, Two of his brothers died young, etc. So you know Thomas came out in front economically. Yeah. But anyway, well tonight's presentation is about Anne, and I think that what you've done is um, you know you're really bringing to the surface the lives of these uh, Hassel women, uh, who for many decades have been um, you know well behind the um, the um, uh, what's known of the men uh, mm. because all the records, all the land grant records, all the political records uh, you mentioned Roland being involved in politics, he wasn't involved in politics as such but he was involved in public life which is probably what yeah. you mean yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you know and they would make donations to charities, philanthropic associations, a religious association, the women are never mentioned but it was their money too wasn't it, it was yeah. Their- yeah and uh, that's what the thing with Anne's Vale was you know, in the newspaper articles of the time, Robert McKay Campbell of Anne's Vale, but it wasn't his. Mm-hmm. Sorry, dude. You know, oh, like, well, we can, we can, we can, we can write it as we yeah. see it from our yeah. perspective. That you know, that's what the women endured then, as yeah. normal. But now we can make comment on it and learn from it, and that's why we say what we're trying to do is look at history, but also just learn from it, re- reflect on it, and how we yeah. go about our business uh, at the current time. And you could imagine the pressure that Anne Hassel probably was under to sell Anne's veil to bail Robert out, and she didn't. You know, she held on to her piece of land. So, yeah. well, there you go, Rosalind Vaughan. That might be a good reason for <laughs> a little bit of antipathy there. That she said, "I'm not. You can go and go go bust yourself, but this is the only thing I've got, and I'm going to keep it." So that yeah. might be something. If, if only we had some records of that nature. Yeah. Well. We've driven past Wingello, the property on the highway at Marula, and I said to my husband, we need to detour around the back road, which we're going to do on our next trip down to see. We couldn't get in the front, but maybe there's a way to go around and look at the back. But that's still all before the heritage listing, and it would be lovely to see it retained, Mm. but Mm. it could take a while. 
Yeah, it would be a shame to lose the buildings as I believe at the heart of it is that the owners want to create some beautiful home, knock the buildings down or something. Is that correct? Well, they were trying to build within, leave the front facade and modernise the rest of it, but no one's got in there to see what's what's inside. Um, but there's a very keen journalist that's following it mm. and... The council took up the fight and lost at one stage. So they're up for money, but they're still keen to push forward this heritage listing. Um, who knows where it'll go? Yeah. We're hoping that maybe we can get in there and have a look, even at, yeah. just it to walk awesome on the land. It would be awesome to see inside. Yeah. I don't think we'll get inside the house, but to see the actual land from the other side, the old highway, because it, it fronts onto the new highway to Goulburn at Maroolan that you can go around the back onto the old highway okay. and I think we might be able to get in from that back way and we'll have more time on the next trip. Okay yeah no it'd be interesting. So it's an ongoing project. <laughs> yeah 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 but we're lucky to have a few buildings around like Harrington Park is still there of course and it's just gorgeous um Wingelow, Beverly I've been inside the homestead of Beverly it is an amazing building um if ever there's a nuclear war go to that building the walls are like this thick it's mm. it, it must have been a wonderful architect just couldn't manage his money <laughs> yeah I'd love to know <clears throat> at what stage Anne and Robert weren't living together yeah, I'd have to go back through my records, but it would, yeah. I and and as I say, I've got his death certificate. It doesn't end, it indicate he was a chronically unwell man because I sort of thought, oh well, he went and lived with one of the daughters to be cared for or something like that. But I I can't find any evidence for that. Can I just ask? Do you know why he named the house Beverly? No, I don't. Would Beverly no. have had something to do with the reason that he and Anne split up? Oh, yeah, maybe. Sorry. I don't. I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. I, it's probably got a Scottish connection. I don't oh, know. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful property. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's still in the family or no, it's not? No, it belongs to the Merriman family. Oh, still, yeah. Scott, he, they, they, um, when William, the, the son-in-law died, um, it went out of the family then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just, just a shame. Ask, Could Sorry. I just say, ask one thing? Are we going to be in the spirit of the times through you know, politically correct and... Um, I suppose I'm revealing myself as a sort of woke centre lefty, but are we going? Well, we were talking about all these land grants and everything. Yeah. First of all, at the reunion, is there going to be some acknowledgement of the Aboriginal land on which the um, reunion is taking place? And also, some mentioned that you know, Aboriginal people were dispossessed by mm. hassles and many of the others being given their land. Uh, I think you know, in, in 2023, something should be said at the beginning of the. Oh, yeah. At the reunion. Um, do you agree? I agree. Yeah, oh, just, 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 just an acknowledgement. Organise yeah. us. Yeah. 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 Although I've got to say, like most of my family, and I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to gloss over history or anything because certainly there's some sad times, but um, <laughs> for my family at Yass, basically the Aboriginals lived across the river from the main homestead. And they actually interconnected and there's some beautiful stories of them um, pretty much living together fairly well. So I'm really proud of that. And, and no doubt there are some bad stories and I won't, you know, try and um, glorify anything. But, yeah, they actually live together fairly well. Has anyone done something about the Hassel's relationships with um, you know, First Nations people as we're supposed to refer to them now? Um, I'd be very interested, actually, um, to know how they... I think yeah. Alison's going to say something there. Go ahead. Yes. Um, Catherine, just for your interest, mm -hmm. uh, my background, you can see Hassel Park. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That park has been recently named Hassel Park and it's at O'Connell. And at O'Connell Plains, um, in, the, in about 1818, six of Roland's children were granted land there. So there's a lot of history. And mm -hmm. so this park was um, named Hassel Park, I think in 2017. And I spoke at the opening there, Oberon Council were there and my mother and I both put in submissions and Oberon Council thought it was a great idea that it'd be called Hassel Park. Uh -huh. In the park, there's an information board. And on one side of the information board, it gives the European history. And on the other side of the information board, it gives the Aboriginal history. Oh, and so I think people mm -hmm. are, are trying to accommodate where they can. And I think it's um, just a great idea. It's well done. The park is small, it's simple, it's well kept, and it mm -hmm. um, acknowledges quite a lot. So I think you'll find that um, lots of things will will be done, but it's it'll be a, a, a gradual thing. And at the moment, we have the focus on where the, the hassles are. So this just slips in by being there as well. Right. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Go there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you will go there because on one of the days of the reunion in May, I'm hoping to do a trip um, or anybody who wants to come to come down the mountains and follow how they went and end up having, say, morning tea, a cup of tea or a lunch or something in this park. I'll be there. So, <laughs> so Kathy, further to your, your question, I've been thinking about this a lot and, and I'm hoping that... Um, you know, through this uh, family association, we can we can play a role in in um, building bridges um, across those generations. And um, you know, we can't change the past, but we can understand it. Yeah. And um, and I just think it's a it's a bigger issue than we can handle at the May twenty twenty three event. I think we can acknowledge it, but mm. I I think it would be good if we get a group of family members who want to work on it over a period of time to meet representatives of those nations on whose land we came to live. Um, and that might take some time because there would be a lot of trust building, a lot of storytelling, because I know that they have their oral histories. We have our documents. They have their oral histories and they, they know where their land was taken. And some of them are, are writing it into theses now what mm -hmm. their experience was so for example yeah. you get something like um training of young women uh in Parramatta aboriginal women from the from the european point of view it looks like helping these young women uh to successfully you know go forward in life but to the aboriginal people it looked like young women being stolen and yeah. you know and and enculturated so there's totally different ways of looking at these things uh, so it's a very complex subject but I think both sides can learn uh, and, I, I, and try and understand what the motives were on each side. So I think it's a really important question. We, we shouldn't overlook it, and but we can't rush it either. And um, so, you know, so, so I'm saying it's a really important question, but a really complex one. Yes. Oh, no, look, I'm not saying making a big deal of it at the reunion, just the, the acknowledge of, acknowledgement of the land. Of the land. That's all. I, think, I think a lot of the younger ones, yeah. the younger people at the reunion might actually expect it. Yeah, well... So, I mean, it's air done everywhere, isn't it? No, yeah, no the, well, oh, it'll yeah. be the heartfelt acknowledgement rather than just, you know, lip service. It's acknowledgement. Mm. Um, and I think the school where we go to, they, they do that anyway. Oh. Um, but we, it will be part of the program. Um, but I hope it begins a conversation into the future. Mm, mm, mm. That's a good question. Thank you. Mm. I'm just wondering if there's any uh, final questions for Anne about the presentation or uh, failing uh, questions, um, some expressions of thanks to her. James is going to ask him questions and give some thanks to one, Anne. One quick question. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, two things. Yes, uh, I'd like to add the, the, the thanks. It was just wonderful. And the way you articulated with the various dates, I, I was just taken back. It went on and on. And I thought, wow, you've done a lot of research. That's great. <laughs> Thank um, you. That's wonderful. And look, there was mention in, in the presentation, uh, one of your relatives, uh, with the resumption of good hope, passed away with a broken heart. 
<laughs> what elaborate a little bit more with the results? So basically, of... <laughs> that's Anne Hassel's son-in-law. Yes, yeah, son-in-law, who was married to um, Anne Hassel's young, um, younger daughter. Um, yeah, basically, uh, once Good Hope was re it resumed about 1912, I think, but they were able to still live on the land for a couple of years before it all went underwater. It, that I've got some trove documents, and he actually he had a stroke, and um, he. Uh, basically, um, he went into a Great Depression once uh, Good Hope was resumed as part of the Murrumbidgee scheme because uh, it was a it was he it was a farm that was inherited from his father. Um, they were first settled on the property back in 1837. Um, he had been the first white child born on the property, so yeah, just broken hearted that the property went out of the family. Into the Murrumbidgee Irrigation uh, Basically. Project. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. it on the Burren Jack Dam? The Burren Jack Dam's there now, is that right? Uh, I think so. I'm a Queenslander, so I'm not 100%. Yeah. Uh, Good Hope, if you go into Yash, you'll see the Good Hope Road and you go out there and the old homestead, what's left of it is still there. It's now a ski resort called Good Hope. And it's pretty, I went out there oh, when I did that trip to Beverly, um, it's pretty run down and, yeah, it's a pretty sad place actually. But the river is beautiful. But, um, yeah, um, he, yeah, it, it, he basically he, the, he lost the property, had a stroke and just never recovered and died. Mm. Yeah. I read it a bit differently. The resumption of Good Hope, I thought, wow, it's Good Hope's coming back. It's all about the property. All oh, no, no, no. The, sorry, the property name was Good yeah. Hope. Sorry. Yeah. After Good but, Hope Africa, where his um, mother was from. Yeah. Cave uh, of Good much Hope. appreciated. Mm -hmm. you see and, and just getting, oh, sorry, just getting back to um, Robert and Anne's relationship. Um, that word relit that was mentioned in... Uh, what was, what document did you present? What does that mean? I wonder. So a relict of usually means that their husband is deceased. Mm. So a relict is what's left. It's an old term. It, it comes from newspaper articles. Yeah, it's just an old term. It's just a. I think it's an old. I think it's a word instead of widow. So, oh, I see. I should Google yeah. it, mate. Shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, just old terms. I try mm -hmm. and keep the same terminology and the you know the writings of the day kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, oh no, I must congratulate you too on the way you've done it. It's wonderful. I'd like to do something like that on our French connection, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> but then oh. they do it beautifully, and thank you, thank you. No, I like. As I said, I, my main focus has been on her daughter, Anne Campbell, um, and her husband um, uh, and the McCallum family. But once I had a look at Anne Hassel, you can't help but admire her. And, yeah, she, she was amazing. I'm glad I got to know her. Are we yeah. still the only two connected with Anne? I believe so, Roslyn. Um, unless Graham knows about well, it. Well, don't give up hope because um, we've found with the other family lines that just generating this activity has made connections on Ancestry and on the Facebook page um, and, and other relatives will be found. You know, I was thinking that because actually, because um, Anne and Robert uh, Campbell had the largest number of children of any of, of the eight siblings even though some of the other families after that were smaller but there must be a lot of relatives out there yeah, and uh, we just have to to find them so uh, Rosalind don't give up hope on that uh, yeah. I don't because know what I've we got can some do. DNA matches that once we've got a final program and something to show them um, there are DNA matches on the Campbell line which good, good. we need to explore but you, you know you suggested that we wait till we had a firm um, program ready for them to look at. Yes. Look, uh, so we'll, I, what I was going to say now, we're, we're coming to the end of our session together, um, that Rosalind, maybe in the new year, 
you might be ready to present something on, on your, your part of the family line. Uh, we wanted these uh, sessions to be just the beginning rather than a one-off. We'd like to every, you know, periodically when, when there is someone ready to present something, and also some sessions might be just to network and, and meet people, but uh, because you are also doing research on your family history, maybe in the new year, maybe February or March, that uh, yep. we could aim to find some more family members and invite them to a presentation by yourself. Yep. We're currently selling the house and moving in November. So after that, we'll be, we'll be fine. Okay, that's wonderful. To start doing more work. I just fiddle around with the transcribing to give me a comic relief. I, I looked at you're in front. I can't keep up with you. Uh, you, you know, in, in, the, in the stats, you, you're ahead of me. I keep throwing my hands up in the air thinking, oh, my God, I can't stand this writing anymore. <laughs> and, so I pick uh, and choose. Have, have, you, have you seen uh, my name lower down the scale than yours? No, I haven't looked at the scale. Well, on the statistics, because three of us get together every Wednesday night, Alison as yep. well and uh, Kay yep. Clapton, but we can't keep up with you. Oh, that's all right. I, I <laughs> flit around between the, the different things to see what I can find. Um, so, you know, I'm not regularly doing the same diaries yeah. or whatever. Yeah, but, keep um, it interesting. And uh, There's no mention of the girls. Very little mention of the girls. Very much. It is um, so th hard. There is actually also the curation of these papers. You must remember that these papers went into the state library some maybe eight decades after the passing of Roland. Mm -hmm. They went in a, roughly 1900, went into the state library, into the Mitchell Library. So they've been mm -hmm. kept in the family, which means that a lot of letters might have been seen as not necessary or not historical. And, and mm -hmm. that, you know, this is what's left over. So it's not everything that was written it's what's um uh, you know sort of um uh, was remained <laughs> saved restored because if the ladies were writing the letter they would mention the children and what was going on within yes. the family but the men aren't not well there's a little bit but not a huge yes. amount yes. um they're talking about visiting and that but um yeah well, we keep looking, uh, but there are 85 different collections in the state library that have hassle materials. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. We'll keep going. <laughs> I just wanted to ask Anne Dadzinski whether yeah. this has given you any inspiration for your presentation. And well, I'm just so impressed, yeah. but it's also made me. Feel, I haven't. I haven't even start thinking about doing any research on Susanna, but but I can see as a woman that someone needs to do more on on the women. Yeah. So I'm hoping now that when I have mine that we'll find someone else to, to take on this because I, I didn't really want to be the coordinator. It was just that Jean stopped, Jean, um, who'd done so much of the history. Uh, so, you yeah, know, I, I, I'm getting too old. I won't be able to remember what I've read the yesterday if I go to that extent. Um, so, I yeah, I, I collect what others have done, but I'm, I'm not looking... To, to do that sort of work, I'm really not. I'm, I'm just trying to keep up with the current generation so that they don't separate you know, and, and not know who they belong to eventually. Look, I, think yeah, I think that's that. okay. I just want to encourage you. And you just do your own thing. You tell us what your mm. what your interest is and, and, and you know, what you do have um, together. You don't have to go out and do a lot of research for this presentation. Everybody's well, just doing oh, their own it's too thing. Too late. I know. I'm, I'm not. I've got other. I've got other stuff. I I have to do sure. or do do. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. Yes, of course. I will see. Okay, but so it's really been worthwhile joining this this presentation. Thanks. Well, perhaps we will bring it to a close there and just thank Anne Brockers so much for for yeah. what she's delivered yeah. to us tonight. Oh, and. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, I'm very Anne. grateful to you, Anne. Thanks so much. Very good. Thank you, everybody. I just want to say just quickly to those that are doing the transcribing, a huge thank you because I've done a little bit of it myself and it's not easy and it's, yeah, hard to stick with. So thank you. I hope you guys have a major breakthrough and find out something really cool, <laughs> you know, one day. <laughs> yeah. It'd be lovely. Yeah. yeah. So okay, thank so, you. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time on a Friday night to oh, um, no, have right. a listen. Fascinating. Fascinating. Um, great.